Yo, what's good? In this video, I'm going to show you my favorite ways you can sample in FL Studio just like the pros. I'm going to show you stock and third-party plugins, ways to reverse samples the right way, how to pitch, and so much more. Make sure you stick around to the end so you don't miss a tip. With that being said, let's get into it. So number one is Fruity Slicer. Let's say we have a sample. Double-click on it. You can open up in the channel rack just like any other plugin, or you can right-click the sample, and you can hit Open in New Fruity Slicer Channel. So it's going to automatically give you all these chops. You can control how many chops it has with the high and the low the further to the left you go the less chops you get the further to the right the more chops you get you can preview the chops up here you can also reverse a chop you can adjust this attack knob just slightly so that way you get rid of any clicks and pops you can also choose the clicking that declicks the end of the sample. This is where you can load a sample, save original, you can save the processed sample. So you can tell Fruity Slicer how to chop your sample here. It, by default, it just goes by transient. But you can also do fill gaps, alternate fill gaps, pro default, pro transient, so on and so on. Mess around, see what you like, see what you don't like. But this is a very simple version of a way that you can chop samples in FL. Now, what it does is it automatically drops all of your sample chops into the piano roll, which I don't know why it does that, but you just cut and delete them so you can either just like anything else like any other melody you can click in your melodies like this or you can play them if you turn on type to keyboard You can also pitch up and pitch down, and you can change the length of the sample here. So you can pitch here, but it, it does add some like weird artifacts. So number two is Slice X. So now we used Fruity Slicer. Now we're gonna use Slice X. What's the difference? I'll show you. So in my opinion, Fruity Slicer is just like a baby version of this. It's like Slice X Lite in a sense. It looks a lot more like Edison. It has a lot more of those properties and those pieces of the interface here. You can see you have your envelope window where you can change the volume envelope, LFOs, like you can do a lot with this. Let's just load a sample in and see what we can do real quick drop it right into slice x then we can right click this button where the razor tool is and you can choose the type of slicing that you want you want dull auto slicing medium auto slicing sharp small grid slicing medium grid slicing and what I like about this is the, the zoom features. You can zoom in by just scrolling your mouse wheel. You can move these markers around. Like I said, it gets a lot more in depth. You can right click, you can remove one, you can clone it, you can rename the marker. And then just like Fruity Slicer, it dumps it into the piano roll and you can create your pattern there or you can play it out on your keyboard. Either one, it's the same from there. What the difference is, is what the plugin itself can do and how much more in depth you can go. You can add filters. You got the articulator here and you got a mod X and Y knobs. I mean, the list goes on you got layering options here you got different views you can change in the plugin and again like i said you got this envelope window where you can do lfos and envelope cuts and panning and velocity and mod x mod y's like it, the list goes on what you can do with this plugin it's really dope all right so next up number three is one of my favorite ways and it's just straight manual chopping this is like back to caveman days over here but i love it i still do it to this day i do a combination of all these but i still love manually chopping there's something about it just physically seeing the chops and moving them around with my mouse and just getting really creative and kind of randomizing things so a couple ways i go about it let's just full screen this we can get rid of the mixer for right now make sure that you got your tempo locked in at first you can change the tempo let's say we didn't want to do 144 72 you could change it just make sure that you have it on stretch and then you can just change the tempo to whatever you like and it's going to follow that then i go to the drop down menu here and i go to chop then i go to time base then you can chop in bars beats half beats quarter beats etc and so on and so on let's go bars then we change the grid to a beat grid just in case we want to trim up then i'll just look at transients and i'll just take random ones out this is where i just get super random i don't even listen to things i'll just look at transients and big peaks and then just take some random chops out here and then i'll mute the top one just so the top original one doesn't play and then i'll just start messing around With the new fading system in FL, you can get rid of the clicks and pops easier than ever. Seems too slow, we can speed it up.
All right, so number four, we can stay in the playlist. We can stay with this manual chopping method, but I'm gonna take it a step further. And there's a tool inside the playlist that I bet you've never used. Maybe you've seen it. Maybe you just didn't know what it did. It's called the slip tool. So with audio clips, you can slip the audio from left to right. You make these chops and to preview and audition different parts of the sample chops that you want to put in, you just slide to the left or slide to the right. So let's turn this metronome off. And the slip tool is this guy right here. Slip. Now you get this icon and you can see that it snaps to your grid also. But if you don't want it to snap to your grid, hold the alt key and you can turn the snap to grid off temporarily. So you can slide and audition different parts of that sample. Make sure you make some chops with the razor tool. That way you can slip through and you can create a really dope rhythm that way. All right, number five is another favorite of mine. It's layering samples. What do I mean by layering samples? You can go a couple different routes here. I like to take the same sample sometimes and thicken it up, or widen it up a little bit by layering the same exact sample on top of it. I'll show you what I mean. So we got this piano sample, same one that we were working on before. I'm gonna hold shift, copy, paste it down. I'm gonna make this bottom one unique as sample. So no matter what we do to this one right here, it's not gonna affect this one. I'm gonna send each one to its own mixer track. I'm gonna gain stage and turn the volumes down a little bit, about halfway, so we don't get any clips. So on the first one, I'm gonna throw a parametric EQ2 and we're gonna do a high pass. A little bit here and we're gonna thin it out a little bit what I want to do to the second one it will probably end up clashing with the main one so with the second one I'm also gonna throw an EQ on it I'm not gonna do anything to it just yet but what I'll do here is pitch it down one complete octave this is gonna give it a nice thick sound that's gonna sound really a lot more heavy and bottom heavy Another thing you can do is stereo separate. So it sounds a lot wider in the mix. We're gonna go back to that EQ and I'm gonna do the opposite here. I'm gonna do a low pass and I'm gonna roll off some of the highs. That way it doesn't clash with the main one. We leave the low end and the low mid here. You can actually give it a boost if you like to. Let me just turn down that volume. If you're not satisfied with how wide that sounds, you can take it a step further and go to pre-computed effects, and then you can stereo delay it to the left or to the right. So this is essentially going to take the signal, split it into two, and then slightly pan them left and right. You'll hear a drastic difference right now if you're listening on headphones or monitors in your studio. It just sounds more full, more heavy, without doing too much. Now we layered. You can go the opposite route as well. So you can do either or, or you can do a combination of this one and the one I'm about to show you. So we're just going to go the complete opposite route here. I'm going to go and put a high octave in there as well. So I'm going to go back to the original one. I'm going to shift, copy, paste it, make this one unique, save it, send it to its own mixer track, and I'm going to go up a complete octave. Because it's going to have more of a higher register, high pass again, and we're going to really thin the lows out. really bright sounding and with this one too we can stereo delay it but let's stereo delay it to the right instead of that low one with stereo delayed to the left level it out and blend it so with the high ones i like to throw some reverb on it because we really thinned it out we took all the lows and the low mids out of it with the eq now we can maybe put some reverb shine it up a little bit and spread it out in the mix So essentially it went from this to this. And all we did was layer it with the same exact sample. Just copy and pasted, did a little bit of mixing, a little bit of EQ. Sounds great. All right, number six, another one of my favorites, we're gonna get into effects plugins, stock and some third party. So sometimes layering, doing all this stuff, maybe just isn't enough. You wanna take it a step further, right? You wanna really make this different. You're not satisfied with the way it sounds. You wanna make it really stand out. So you can do that with a bunch of different plugins. Stock first, I go to my old trusty friend, Gross Beat. Now you have a bunch of different settings in here. You have time and volume. So this is gonna 
gonna gate it. I like to mess around with all these different gates. You could do a side chain one, and then I like to take out the second and the fourth one. And then turn down the mix volume knob on it. Now you have all these different presets, there's tons of them. You can even change the preset folders, flanging, momentary, patterns, pitch shifter, repeater, turntable list, the list goes on in there. You can also put on some pretty love filter. I love messing around with the high pass LFOs. And now for some third party stuff, I like using Effectrix a lot for different samples. If you don't have this, Grossbeat does something pretty similar to this. I just love the way Effectrix is laid out. It has this nice grid. I just, I, I love Effectrix. Sometimes I use a combination. And I'm not saying to use all three of these techniques right here on every single sample, but you can. It's not to say that you can or can't. I love this vinyl one about halfway through. Make it sound like a vinyl stop, and then I adjust the mix knob. I'll put it on a half slope. You have a bunch of different effects in here. You can loop, scratch, reverse, stretch, sample, tone delay, stutter, crush, filter, phaser, chorus, delay, reverb. That's gonna make your samples really stand out, utilizing the plugins that you have in your list, especially stock. Don't sleep on your stock plugins. Patcher has a bunch of really dope stuff. There's a lot of different filters. There's a lot of different effects plugins with FL Studio. So dive into them, use them on your samples. Don't just kind of throw a sample loop in there and forget about it and just make drums around it. Really make it your own, make it stand out. Use these techniques or a combination of these techniques that I'm showing you on your samples and they're gonna stand out guaranteed. All right, now number seven is reversing samples. I'm gonna show you how to reverse them the right way. Now, what do I mean by the right way? We have this loop right here, this is a different one. It has a nice chord progression to it. Now let's say I wanna layer a reverse underneath it and get that to work. Hold shift, drag and down and copy and paste it. Make this one unique as sample, then reverse it, right? That should work. Not always the case because that chord progression is now reversed. So what was at the beginning is now at the end and those chords might not match up. Most likely they will not match up sonically. See what I mean? Just doesn't sound right. I mean, I could get it to blend a little bit better with some mixing and EQ and leveling, but sonically and music wise, it just doesn't match up. So what do we do? Go to that drop down menu again that I showed you earlier. Go to chop, go to time base, go into bars, bring the last to the first and the first to the last in order, just like this. It takes two seconds. Boom, boom, boom. Now they're going to match up. <laughs> Perfecto. Now we can really take it into the mixer and then throw some EQ on the reversed one. Some simple EQ is all it takes. Get rid of some of those lows. So that's going to do it for this video. Those are my favorite ways you can sample an FL Studio like the pros. If you like this video, let me know in the comments section down below. Make sure to like and subscribe. And as always, share this with a friend if you get me.